These two eyes can only perceive that which is physical. The third eye is an inward focused eye. Your lustfulness, your desiring nature never ever stood outside, it only stood inside. Lust means it creates a sense of incompleteness within you and a longing for something. When we say Shiva, the word Shiva has become synonymous with the third eye. The third eye, what it means is, these two eyes are to look outside. These two eyes are capable of showing you the physicality of the existence. These two eyes can only perceive that which is physical. The third eye is an inward focused eye. It's not going to open up upon your forehead. The third eye is an inward-looking eye. But you have heard stories, Shiva opened his eyes and he burnt karma. In India, there is a god of love and lust called karma. Karma means lust, which you don't like to face it head on so you make it love. <laughs> you, because you… you need some aesthetic to it. So, he hides behind a tree and uh, shoots an arrow at Shiva's heart. Tuck it hits him and Shiva gets a little disturbed. Then he sees it's karma. That is, it's his own lust coming up. Then he opened up his third eye, a fiery eye and burnt karma. He was hiding behind the tree but he was burnt into ashes. Then Shiva took the ashes of this burnt karma and smeared himself. That I have put these things to rest for good. That is the general story told to the people, but you tell me, your lust arises within you or behind the tree? No, you may go behind the tree, that's another matter <laughs> But where does it arise? Within you. Desire is not hanging outside. It is not because a beautiful woman or a beautiful man is sitting there, your desire comes. Because the desire, the karma is within you. So he opened his third eye and burned the karma within himself, not the one who is standing outside. Because he never ever stood outside. Please look at this and see. Your lustfulness, your desiring nature never ever stood outside, it only stood inside. So he opened his third eye, not this way, inward. Then he saw this lustfulness, which essentially means that some aspects are built into you, which makes you feel incomplete. So you think you will find completion only by going towards something or somebody. Lust is not just about opposite sex, shopping is lust because you have to go towards something, only then life will be complete. Every desire is lust because without that I cannot exist. I want that because only when I have that, this will be complete. It may be a thing, it may be a position, it may be power, it may be sexuality, it doesn't matter what it is. Essentially, lust means it creates a sense of incompleteness within you and a longing for something that it makes you feel if you don't have that, you are not complete. So he decides to burn the karma within himself. He burned the karma and then instead of sweat, ash oozed out of the pores of his body. This is the yogic story. The common story told to the public is he was hiding behind the tree and he burnt him, opened his eyes and burnt him 
and then he took that ash and smeared himself. The yogic dimension of the story is, karma arose within him, he opened his third eye, burnt him, and then ash slowly oozed out of his body, clearly showing him everything is laid to rest. Everything that you know as yourself should die. When I say death, it's not the physical death which is a problem. The question is no losing everything that you know as myself right now, your personality, your identity. Once you learn to be an individual beyond physiological and psychological formats, that means you're for good. This is what living death means. So if you know how to be an individual still, without physiological and psychological format, you are a living death. If you are a living death, you are eternal in your existence. It is time that you become living death so that you live eternally.